Welcome to Love and Abuse, the show about helping you identify poisonous communication and toxic behavior. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. That's why it's important that you learn to pinpoint manipulative and controlling behavior so that you keep your power and your sanity. I'm your host, Paul Coliani. All right, welcome to another episode of Love and Abuse. Uh, I want to address something that's been on my mind. I've heard somebody or a few people say this to me, and it is the people that say it takes two. And the context I'm referring to is when someone cheats in a relationship, when someone is the infidel or goes outside the values of the relationship or the guidelines of a relationship. Because I think for the most part, people in relationships or, you know, romantic relationships want to have a monogamous relationship unless it's set up differently. There are relationships out there that are set up differently. They're open. There are different guidelines. There are different rules and structure for those relationships. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the relationship where you go into it and your partner goes into it with the agreement that there will be no betrayals. There will be no infidelity. Yet we all know people do it. Someone listening right now may have cheated on their partner or their partner cheated on them. If that's you, you know, that's, that's tough to go through. If you have survived that, if your relationship has survived that, then more power to you, more strength to you. I hope that it continues to grow and prosper. But um, I'm not really here to discuss infidelity as a whole. I've done that on other episodes. In fact, you'll probably hear one uh, coming up, which is going to be sort of a replay from an episode that I did on The Overwhelmed Brain, my other podcast. And it's a very important episode on infidelity and healing and getting through it. And I want to play it in Love and Abuse as well, because I'm sure that um, many listeners of this show might have to face that. If they haven't already, they might have to. And what I mean by that is there might be infidelity. There might not. There are relationships out there that never experience this, and hopefully that's yours. But if it is, I just want to address one aspect of it, and that is the it takes two concept. I heard someone speak of this about uh, when my girlfriend was in her marriage and her husband cheated on her multiple times. Uh, Someone close to her said that, well, it takes two, you know. And it just bothered the heck out of me. It really bothered me to hear that. And I'll tell you why. Now, if you've been cheated on or you've been the cheater, this isn't about either one. This isn't about me taking sides. It's about a perspective that I want to share with you so that it's understood that if someone comes up to you and says, well, it takes two. I believe there needs to be clarity in that statement. Because what happens is people think that, oh, it takes two, that means that I'm at fault as well. If my partner cheated on me, then it must be partially my fault as well. I don't buy it. I mean, I get it. I understand what's being said, but I don't buy it. And let me tell you why. Uh, What happens in a relationship is that, yes, it takes two to work on the relationship It takes two to nurture it and strengthen it. And it definitely takes two to communicate about it and speak honestly, express yourself, say the hard truths that sometimes need to come out, support each other, be there for each other, uh, be compassionate toward each other, be empathetic for each other. It takes two to do all of those things. But it only takes one to cheat. That doesn't mean both partners wouldn't cheat, but that one person on one side cheats. And if the other person is cheating as well, that person on that side is cheating, but that's one. So this is the problem I have with that comment. If you've ever heard this comment, or even if you've ever said it, no offense, but it's wrong. It doesn't take two to cheat. It takes one to cheat. It takes two to work on a relationship that might succeed, might not succeed, might disintegrate to the point where one or both of you feel like there could be more to the relationship or more to your life. So you or your partner might think, well, there could be more and this relationship is terrible 
and I'm not enjoying myself here. And every time I come home, I have to deal with it. So why don't I just go find someone else to make me happy? Those thoughts in themselves aren't the problem. The problem is when one of you goes outside the boundaries of the relationship, outside the established values or even established vows, and decides to make the conscious choice to cheat. That's where the problem starts. Because now the other one is experiencing a betrayal of trust. And that betrayal is the beginning of the end. And it could be the beginning of the end of the beginning. Because sometimes a relationship does survive infidelity. Sometimes it gets through it and people are stronger because of it. People are better, you know, quote, better because of it. People express themselves more. The partners are more honest than they ever were after the infidelity. And the relationship could grow into something that it never was and never could have been without the infidelity. That doesn't mean I'm promoting infidelity. I'm just saying that this is what can happen is that there can be a breakdown that leads to a breakthrough that leads to something wonderful. But I have the opinion of why take that chance? A, betraying the person that you've committed to is a very dangerous road. Not only that, it's extremely selfish and uncaring. Now I say that knowing that it's a little abrasive, it's a little rough. Because some people have had terrible relationships and they're mistreated and maybe even emotionally abused or physically abused. Some people have already experienced a betrayal of trust. And therefore, the other person says, well, I'm just going to go cheat. I know that happens. And sometimes it feels very justified. But my point isn't to argue for that or, or, or against that. My point in this episode is to say that it doesn't take two to cheat. It takes one. And one of the main reasons I wanted to, con- to convey that today is because there are a lot of people out there that have had infidelity in their relationships and the person that cheated might have said something like that or someone that you know might have said something like that to the both of you. And I think it's very important to have clarity around that statement. And the clarity, I believe, you should have is it takes two to build, nurture, and grow a good relationship, but it only takes one to cheat. It only takes one person to betray the trust of the other person. And again, both partners can do this to each other. But the reason I'm emphasizing this so much is because some people will go through their life thinking that they're at fault for their partner cheating. And that's not how it works. You cannot be at fault for someone else's conscious choice to do something that is outside the commitment that you both agreed to and outside the values of the relationship. That should be an unwavering foundation. Now, that doesn't mean you can't say, look, I'm having a really crappy time in this relationship and I have to get out of it or I have to take a break. I'm all for taking a break if that's what needs to happen. If there's no progress and you can't get through to each other and you can't express yourselves or you don't feel safe, then maybe it is time to take a break. But at least you're establishing a new guideline, a new rule. But when there's been nothing spoken about taking a break or seeing other people and the assumption is that the guidelines still exist and then one of you decides to cheat, that is when it takes one. That is the other person making a decision for the relationship by doing something for themselves. It took one person to do that. And having this understanding takes away some of the guilt that can form. Because somebody can carry guilt thinking that their partner cheated on them. I've heard people say this. I have guilt about my partner cheating on me because I blame myself. And like I said, it's not a matter of you mistreating your partner, treating them terribly, calling them names, Anything like that that might drive them to make that conscious choice to cheat on you. But to make that choice without a discussion or some sort of separation or breakup, in most cases, in most relationships, it is such a violation of the values of a relationship that you are now acting on your own accord or the other person is. And because of that, it took one. And in order for two people to work on something... Both people have to be committed to the original foundation, the original guidelines that were set up. 
So I'm not trying to be for or against either the cheater or the victim here. Because like I said, you could be the one who did this, or your partner could have been the one who did this, or you may have both done this. But understand that when it happens, the person is making a conscious choice to do it. And when that conscious choice is made outside the foundational values and guidelines of the relationship, the cheater is acting on their own and has nothing to do with their partner at that point. Again, unless new guidelines are formed. It's just important to remember that the foundation, the structure of how a relationship is set up is assumed. I mean, both of you assume that that will be the guidelines that you follow. And that's why a good relationship can survive arguments, can survive fights, because it's understood that both people will stay within the guidelines. So even when my girlfriend and I get into an argument and it gets really heated and we say things that are really on our mind, we know that the settling down point after that, because we're honest, because we get it all out on the table, the settling down point is going to come back to that foundation. There's an intrinsic trust in the relationship that we're not constantly thinking, well, they're just going to go find someone else to be with. But this happens in a lot of relationships too. A lot of relationships develop this intrinsic trust for each other where they don't even have to think about it. That's why the betrayal is so strong, is that you don't even think about someone cheating on you or they don't think about you cheating on them. It's just not there. It's just a trust that's always there. This is why it can hurt so much to be cheated on. In my other podcast, I call it emotional murder. It can feel like someone just ripped your heart out and threw it on the floor and had no regard for your feelings or emotions. That's why I believe it's so important to continue honoring at least the foundation of the relationship. And if you can't, if you find yourself that you really want to go outside the relationship, to be with someone else, then in my opinion, this is only my opinion, you should separate or break up, either temporarily or permanently, so that it doesn't go outside the original commitment. That way both of you are involved with the new guidelines. If one of you is making up the rules as you go along, then there's not much of a relationship there anymore. It will fall apart. It doesn't work that way. And one or both of you are going to be devastated eventually because the foundation has fallen apart and there's nothing to stand on or land on. I hope this has been helpful. Share this with others that might benefit. Love and Abuse is the official podcast of The Mean Workbook, an assessment and healing guide for difficult relationships. If you want to pinpoint the exact behaviors causing difficulties in your relationship, including identifying all the signs of possible emotional abuse, head over to loveandabuse.com. And if you have the workbook and you want to be in the private Facebook group, send an email to paul at loveandabuse.com. This show exists to remind you that you're not alone and you're not going crazy. You deserve to be treated with kindness and respect. You deserve honesty and sincerity. You deserve to be treated as worthy and significant because you are. Thank you for joining me today. We'll talk again soon.